I'm Emily Peters, Associate Curator of Prince Drawings and Photographs at the RISD Museum. And I'm here with Andrew Raftery, who is a professor of printmaking at the Rhode Island School of Design. And Andrew and I have been working on an exhibition together on the subject of Renaissance and Baroque engravings. And it's titled The Brilliant Line, Following the Early Modern Engraver, 1480 to 1650. Today we're in the studio with Andrew, who is a practicing engraver, and he's going to show us a lot about the technique of making an engraving. So I'm getting ready to trace the copy drawing, and I want it to be, I want to trace it, and then I'm going to flip the tracing over so I can reverse it on the plate. The drawing that Andrew chose is by Francesco Primaticcio, and he made it in the 1540s when he was working in France. It's the kind of drawing that would have been used by an engraver, and Andrew made a copy after this drawing, and in doing so, he worked out some of the iconographic elements and the format, making it into an oval. So I'm just going to finish it up, and then I'm ready to remove the tracing from the drawing. So I'm going to melt a little bit of wax onto this plate and then spread it out with a roller. So the wax is going to take an impression from the drawing, so I'm going to use the tracing and then trace through the tracing paper with the stylus, and that's going to leave the drawing on the plate just lightly touched onto the wax. see the impression of the outlines into the wax and I'll be able to follow those outlines with the dry point tool and scratch those lines in to have a guideline for the whole process. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using this steel tool to scratch the lines in the plate. I'm following the lines I made with the wax that are impressed in the wax and I'm scratching them in the plate with the tool. And what this is going to do, it's going to give me a very, very pale outline that I can follow throughout the engraving process. So I'm ready to start engraving, and I'm going to place the plate onto this sand-filled pad, and that allows me to have a kind of pivoting action when I work the plate, because one of the principles of engraving, especially for curves, is that the plate is pushed and the tool is stationary. This is an engraving tool, it's called a burin, and it's this square steel shaft that's been inserted in this handle and polished and sharpened so that these three planes come to a perfect point. So I engage the tool in one of my dry pointed lines. And as I'm pushing the plate, a curl of copper is emerging. And that curl of copper is called the burr. When I get to the end of the line, I pull out the burin, and I take this tool called the scraper, and I use the scraper to cut off the burr. So once all the outlines have been laid in, I start to develop the forms with, kinds of, with a certain kind of cross-hatching. And that's um, one of the most important interpretive acts of the engraver, is deciding on the various patterns that are going to be used in the cross-hatching. I think we're ready to print. Okay. We're in the etching area of the CIT print shop at RISD. And we have everything set up here to um, start pooping the plate. This is a dauber, and what it does is it forces the ink into the engraved lines. And now I'm just going to use a card to take off most of the excess ink. So you can see why each impression of an engraving took so much work. And I'm going to use the um, tarlatan, which is this stiffened cheesecloth, and start wiping the ink off of the surface of the plate. So the printing press will pull the ink from inside those incised lines. 
So I've done as much as I can do with the rags, and I'm ready for the next stage, which is called hand wiping. And this um, picks up some of the plant tone on the palm of my hand. So I use a little bit of whiting, which is calcium carbonate. paper's been sitting in the bath, and that's allowed it to soften both the gelatin and the fibers of the paper. And now I'm just going to bring it over to the blotting area to get rid of some of the excess water that's in the paper. First I blot it under the blotters. So the design that he chose, the drawing, which is a drawing of a hermaphrodite in the clouds, was never reproduced as an engraving. So in this case, Andrew took an example of a drawing that no other engraver has attempted and created it in the style of some of the French engravers of that period. Okay, here we go. Pull back the blankets, and we're ready to remove the impression from the plate. You can see that it, the print is in reverse of the engraved image. And therefore in the same direction as the original drawing. That's right. It's clear and crisp. <laughs> it's beautiful.